Hi everyone, another quick five minute video here. This is off the back of my last uh, five minute video which was the QFN package reflow repair that I did on some of the PCBs that I've been assembling. Uh, one or two people in the comments asked uh, how I go about cleaning my boards because I think I maybe have mentioned in the video that I do have an ultrasonic cleaner. Well this is it here, it's a small three litre tank Timer controlled, heater controlled, and it's just perfect for the size of boards that I do. Three litres, so it'll accept a Euro card sized PCB in it, so you know it'll take quite a large PCB really. And um, what I like to use is a proper flux removing soap that's designed for PCBs. Of course, back in the day, we'd be using Freon uh, in these ultrasonic tanks, and the great thing about Freon uh, was that it would clean boards and leave no residue almost, and you wouldn't need to rinse the boards afterwards because it'd be bone dry because the Freon evaporated so fast. But of course, that's a CFC, so we'll not get away with that nowadays. So what we have to use is a proper cleaning solution water based. This is a flux remover and PCB cleaner ultrasonic solution there from Allendale Ultrasonics in the UK. Um, I haven't tried a great lot of different cleaning products. Um, maybe about the second or third one that I tried seemed to work pretty good and this is it. This is part number US-SO-FLU and it's a concentrate so um, it's one part concentrate to ten parts water. Now of course you can't really just use tap water so you have to use a deionized water or this is just the cheap stuff that I buy from the local uh, car uh, garage there. That seems to work good so I've already got a uh, solution mixed in the tank. Um, as per the data sheet for this here it likes to work from between 50 and 80 degrees centigrade um, so I'm actually running at 60 degrees I find that works pretty well for me uh, I don't really want to go much hotter than that um, so we'll run you through the process right now and uh, show you a PCB in action so here's a board that I recently reworked and I've just recently added on the battery terminals on the back here so there's flux everywhere. I've just recently put on these uh, terminals from mounting an LCD and a keypad and it's pretty grimy. You probably won't be able to pick it up in the video but it's pretty grimy on the top surface there. So the procedure is I'm already up to temperature. That's the important thing. Get it up to temperature before you put in a board. Um, so it's up to temperature, 60 degrees. So it is quite it's not you know really hot but it's quite hot to touch so that's why I don't go much beyond 60 degrees so it's a case of pop the board in and then what I like to do is run the ultrasonics for about two minutes normally about halfway through that I'll turn the board I'll switch it off turn the board over and give it another go uh, and I'll also manually uh, assist in the flux removing process by using a little sawn off a paintbrush here where you know uh, just chop the bristles down so it's actually a little bit stiff in there so you'll see me do that you might not be able to pick up anything uh, I say because it's quite noisy so off we go so I'll just let it sit there for you know maybe about a minute just to let it do its thing There's a few components on this board that I haven't fitted yet because uh, I don't want to immerse them in any water-based solution and one of them is the actual the voltage reference for this board, the LM399 uh, because it's an encapsulated product, it's you know it's got a, a heater inside it and it, you know it's not completely sealed so I don't want that filling with any kind of water and causing any harm to the LM399 because it would be particularly hard to dry out afterwards which you'll see uh, that process in a minute. So it's been going about 50 seconds now so normally what I like to do is with the back of another brush just hold the board down you don't want to uh, move the board around on the bottom of the uh, little cage there so I like to hold it in place and then I'll just lightly go around the places where the the most of the flux is sitting like on the connectors that I've just fitted there. A little bit of help in hand from this little paint sawn off paintbrush does it that we're all the good. What I also like to do is just run the length of the board as well. That gets rid of any streaky marks that may have 
appeared or any fingerprint marks and that sort of thing there. Um, so there's another connector there that I just recently soldered and one over here. And then up and down that side there. So that's that side complete. So now what I'll do is I'll turn it over. Always switch it off before you start handling the PCB again. So I'll turn it over. PCB is actually quite hot, but there we go. And I'll immerse it again, and then off we go again. Again, I'll hold it there, and I'm on the back of the battery terminals here. Just giving it another manual assist. And then up and down the length of the board again. Just get rid of any streaky marks. And that's it. And then turn it over back the other way for the remaining 30 seconds or so. Okay, so that's it done. So the next thing I've got to do, I'll have to rinse the board because, uh, of course, it's all covered in this soapy solution here. Now, and what I'll use for that is I've got a little tub over at the right hand side there, we'll just move across. This little tub here is filled again with the deionized water, which I'll use to just rinse the board. So you can see all the soapy marks all over it there. So I'll pop the board in and I'll just swirl the board around in the bottom there. Just give that a manual help in hand there, and then pull it out. Let's get rid of the most of the water there. Now, of course, that board's absolutely soaked in water, um, and I need to dry it off. Uh, one thing you could do is you could just sit the board on its end somewhere and let it dry uh, by itself. That's the worst thing you can do. Water will just promote corrosion and you want to keep corrosion away from the tracks and the ICs and all the rest of it as much as possible. So I'll assist the uh, drying process with a heat gun. So we'll just go along in my drying area and I'll show you that working. There's two boards that I'd recently done. So normally what I like to do is I'll sit the board on there and then grab my heat gun and then from a fair distance just dry off the board. What I don't want to do is overheat the board because I don't want to stress the components. This is a, a precision board so you know I want to keep any stress to a minimum. So just a light uh, heat there. I'll turn the board over. It's still you know it's it's warm but it's by no means hot and then do the reverse side. Making sure you get the heat into the sockets there because that's where water will sit and any other holes on the board and the, the vias all that sort of thing there and then turn the board over and then I like to give it another go again from the front side good enough now it's just a case of letting that board sit and it should dry the rest of the way itself but probably what I will do, so what I usually do is I'll let it sit for about 20 minutes and I'll actually go back and go again with the heat gun. Especially on the QFN package and the Atmel processor there because it's going to be very easy for water or moisture to sit underneath the IC where it's sort of semi-insulated from the heat of the heat gun. And that's one reason why I did the back side there, to let the heat transmit through the board so that it can help dry out moisture or water underneath the ICs. Of course, you know, moisture and water is going to sit underneath these SO8 packages as well. So I'll put it over to this side here and then let it dry and then get on with the rest of them. So hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.